I'm going to show you a method that I use to check parallel port and to ensure that each pin is working correctly. As you can see, it's in a mode that has the reset is, that is blinking. You want to make sure that this mode is off. And the default values for Mach 3 may not allow you to, to turn this reset off. You can see that external e-stop is requested. And the only way to get that to turn off is if you make sure that the computer knows that the e-stop, the external e-stop, which is pin 10 in this case, is not going to be um, invoked. So we go to ports and pins from the config menu. And the input signals is where the e-stop is located. And you can scroll down to where it says e-stop. And right now it says it's enabled. It's at pin number 10 and it has active low. Right now my computer um, is telling me that it is enabled. The, ex the uh, external e-stop is requested. And that's because the active low is um, it's not being enabled through active load. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to disable this, but I'm going to make it pin number zero. So it's not going to be used. I'll put this back to active low and press OK. So I should be able to get this to reset because there is no pin number zero. And so it's not going to try to read an e-stop. This is the back of my computer. So this is the parallel port. It is a uh, DB25, which means there's 25 pins. This is the female. The cable that you'll be using is a male plug. So I'm going to go ahead and test pin number 1 through 9, which are all of my outputs. To determine whether we have a good interface with the software and the interface with the computer, uh, the computer's parallel port, a couple things you need to look for is under config and ports and pins, make sure that the port number one is correct according to your computer's parallel port. If it's a parallel port that comes standard with the computer and generally it's integrated onto the motherboard, the address is going to be 0x378 and you want to make sure the port is enabled. We're going to go to the motor outputs and right now I am going to be testing pins number two through four and I'm using the DIR pin because I, I can easily determine the the function of that pin by looking at the, the output um, on my meter. For the x-axis, if I press the left arrow key and the right arrow key, I will get a high and low signal, depending on which arrow key that I press. On the y, it'll be the up and down arrow key, and on the z-axis, it'll be the page up and page down. So we can determine whether the software is communicating to our pins and whether our pins are functioning properly or not. Okay, so now we'll want to accept this configuration as two, three, and four, and make that zero, and press OK. We'll have to press the reset button so we can get out of the e-stop mode. Also, you want to make sure that you're in the program run. If you're in the, the tool path mode, you won't be able to use the arrow keys to change the signals. So make sure that you're in the program run mode and let's get started. You can see that I have a multimeter set up. I'll be using a paper clip and I'll be putting this paper clip into the parallel port pins. The parallel port as seen here with the wide area of the parallel port on the right hand side. The number one pin is at the bottom right hand corner of the parallel port. Number two is here, number three, number four. So we'll be checking number two through four. I'm going to go ahead and put the paper clip into pin number two and we will test that particular pin. And I'm going to press the left arrow key so I am in that particular direction for the x-axis. We should see what the left arrow key value will give us. So by putting your black probe and your red probe on, we should get about 4.3 volts after a good connection. Okay, now if I press the right arrow key, let's see what voltage we get. We get about zero, close to zero. So that's correct. That means that we know that pin number two is working. Let's go to pin number three and try that. This will be the up and down arrow key because it's the Y axis. I'm going to press the down arrow key. We get 4.3. I'm going to press the up arrow key. And we get 0. That's correct. Now we'll check number 4. And that should be the page up and page down buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and press page down. 4.3 and I'm going to press the page up 
and I get zero. So that one is functioning also. Move it to number five. We haven't set up number five yet, so we can do that now. Go to config, ports and pins, motor outputs, five, six, and seven. So let's see if we get correct functions on five, six, and seven. Press OK. Press the reset button. Go back to your meter. And number five will be the left and right arrow key. Since it was the x-axis, press the left button. We get voltage. Press the right button. Zero. Now number six. Zero. Press the down arrow. We get 4.3. And the last one, seven. Press the page down. We have voltage, press page up. And we have no voltage. That passes. Now we can try eight, pins eight and nine. So go back to mock and go to ports and pins, config, ports and pins motor outputs, and eight and nine. This can go to zero. Press OK. So just to make sure we have the right one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All right, so the left arrow key, we should get voltage. Yes. And the right arrow key, no voltage. Good. That passes, and now the finally number nine, Press the down arrow key, we have voltage. Up arrow key, no voltage, good. So all of our pins pass, and we know that the software has been able to make a good interface with the parallel port for motor outputs.